historic Hoff Heinz Pavilion in Houston, where today a couple of Texas rivals meet. It's SMU after a disappointing loss at Cincinnati visiting the Cougars. Both teams are one in four so far in conference. They'll be looking to bounce back this afternoon. Dallas meets Houston today on the American Digital Network. SMU visiting the Houston Cougars here at Hoffines Pavilion in Houston. Welcome courtside with former University of Nebraska women's head coach Angela Beck. I'm Matt Peterson. Both these teams call Texas home. They have some similarities, but mostly I think there are some stark differences. Well, there are. Houston's coming in here. They want to run and gun. They want to take 100 shots and 33s in a game, and they say if they do that, they're going to win. But then you take SMU. They have four players over six foot tall. They want to run a high-low, pound it in the post, and control the tempo. All right, let's get to our keys to the game first for SMU. Well, SMU, like what I just talked about, they want to pound the post. Now they have to get back in transition because he's going to play 10 players deep, so they got to get back and stop the running game. And then they've got to, they've got to shut out the game. I mean, they, they haven't closed out the game. It says lose out, but they got to close out this game. And now your keys for Houston. Well, Houston needs to rebound. You can't run without the ball. That's the first thing, and they haven't been rebounding the ball very well. They have to handle SMU's runs because they're going to make some runs in this game, and they need to push that transition so they can get the score up. And now a key player for each team, starting with SMU's Alicia Froling. Well, one of my favorite players. She was preseason ranked third team, all, uh, all American. Uh -huh. No, this is the first team, all conference player right here. She's the hardest working player, one of the hardest working players in this league. She can take you down low. She can shoot from three. She, she'll fight for the rebound. The only player in the American with a double-double every game. And now for the Houston Cougars, it is Angela Harris. Angela Harris is a newcomer, but not to a lot of people. She's a three-star recruit. She was this 27th point guard by ESPN Hoop coming out as a freshman. Uh, she's just coming into her own. She's been on fire lately. She's averaging nine points, and she can take you from the three-point range. She loves that top of the key, or she can break you down with a dribble. Both teams won on the road last year. This is the last ever meeting between these teams here at Hoffheim. Starting lineup and tip-off is next. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. All right, now the starting lineup for SMU. Alicia Froley, Mackenzie Adams, Kiara Perry, Morgan Bolton, and Stephanie Collins. And now the Houston Cougars. Angela Harris, Cheyenne Butler, Kiara Graves, Sarethia Hawkins, and Brianne Kaufman. Third year head coach for Houston, that's Ron Huey. Yeah, Ron Huey is transforming this program with new stadium, new players, an outstanding recruiter. Some big classes as an assistant now doing that at Houston. And now for SMU, very good experience in his first year. It's Travis Mays. I like what Travis Mays is doing. He's trying to work within the system that he's got, but he's he's got his own system too. So he, he's taking his time and really working on the fundamentals of the game. A former star at University of Texas. SMU in their well-known blue. The Cougars will be in white this afternoon. We survived the thunderstorms last night, Angela. And now we're inside the friendly confines of Hoffines Pavilion. The last time these teams will ever meet here as this building will be closed well, after this season. I have to say I feel honored to be able to be here with you and call this game. And I love this arena. I'm sure the next arena is going to be even more spectacular. No! 
And here we go from Houston. SMU controls the tip. Early touch for Alicia Froling. And it rolls home. I like that first look. They went down and saw a little mismatch and uh, put Kiara Perry there on the block and did a little high-low action, which we know they're very good at. Now the Cougars, Sarethia Hawkins. Kiara Graves. Matt, they worked in practice a lot on this dribble drive penetration and SMU's trying to bring the whole team in there to stop that drive and they got a little bit lucky on that one though, but they really want to get it in the paint. An early turnover on UH and they come out in the full court press defensively. Bolton breaks the press. Inside. Collins, good move. Well, Collins was a righty when she was little, then moved to become a lefty, and now she's a righty again. So that means that she can she can shoot from both hands. Angela Harris for three. And the Cougars cut it to one. Well, that's that freshman, Harris, stroking it from three. And back the other way, Kiara Perry draws a foul. She'll go to the line. Well, here's just a little penetration pitch out and a nice uh, follow through by the outside shooter. And, and the next time down, SMU says, you know, you better get back on us too because we're going to run a little bit. Junior guard from Duncanville, Texas at the line. Shoots it at 60% on the season. Bolton and uh, Perry both are from Duncanville. Uh, most players that come from that program have high basketball IQs and are very fundamental. A fast start for both teams. Hawkins. And off the front iron. And SMU comes away with it. I'm going to credit Collins on that play because they're forcing them to shoot around them a bit with 6-6 six, six in there. You know, you, you, you're not having the regular stroke that you normally have. Too long from Bolton. Here come the Cougars in transition. Cheyenne Butler. Cheyenne Butler transferred from USC and has been a, a mainstay for him here. Uh, they scored double digits for him and really uh, came off. An, I think she scored 18 points a couple different times this year. Froling. Great move, and she gets the roll. Well, if you deny her uh, the, the low po post, she's going to take it off that dribble drive all the time, and she has one of the best dribble drives in the game. 8-5, Mustangs early on. Butler. One of the things Houston would love to do here early is get, get uh, the SMU in a little foul trouble, uh, but they're holding their ground and, and really not, not taking any fakes right now. Kaufman had a good look, could not get it to go. Now Collins for SMU. Froling with the left hand, draws a foul. Froling's got her back to the basket here. Nice little pivot move with a, with a little left hand hook shot. So, I mean, she's got a multiple moves at the post. She can take it off the drive. She has not shot well from through po three point range this year, although she was a pretty good three point shooter last year. But I think she's about one of 10 right now. So um, that's not really been part of her game. Well, she's now one point away from a thousand on her career three in the early going. So if she makes this, she'll be the 23rd player in SMU history to reach a thousand so we see a couple early changes right there well deserved uh, I think she's going to leave her mark as one of the great players in SMU history four points inside the first three minutes for Alicia Froling the Australian and a thousand in her career once again the towers of power 
causing a difficult shot on that end. That was Jacqueline Blake who came off the bench, missed her first shot. And then SMU too long on the fast break and it's Cougar basketball. Yeah, just a little inadvertent pass, a little bit too deep and both of these teams are pretty turnover prone. Houston has 20 turnovers a game and SMU 19. They need to really cut down on those if they're gonna win in the American. Butler out wide to Harris, front iron. Here comes the Mustangs. Well, one of my keys was to slow down a little bit on this end. They, they haven't really read that yet. Um, I think they're playing at a little faster pace than probably Coach Travis wants them to. They have the size, they have the abilities to, you know, pound it down low, and they're trying to get everything in transition right now. So I'd like to see them slow down just a little bit. Kaufman came back in to replace Sarethia Hawkins. We saw these teams at the shoot around about 7.30 this morning, and it's <laughs> a much different look from these ladies, much more energy. A good block that time, it was Adams, who we haven't even called her name after her 32-point night Tuesday at Cincinnati, but she got the block on the defensive end there. Well, they're, SMU is one of the top blocking teams, not only in the American, they are the top, but in the NCAA. And they're also one of the best in defense, so it's gonna be tough to earn your shots if you're Houston. Brianne Kaufman gets it to go on her third attempt, and Houston pulls within three. Froling, too long. Good move, a good feed, and then just a bit off the mark from Kaufman. Here's Adams. Confident pull up, high arcing shot rims out. I have to say the pace right now favors Houston. They go deeper, they've got more players. They like this, I think SMU's not in the pace they need to be in. Jasmine Harris, spark plug off the bench. She hasn't started once, but she's fourth on the team in minutes. Cougars have tied it up here at 10. There's Froling doing what she does best, which is keeping the ball alive. Nice offensive tip. Offensive foul goes against SMU. And now will bring us to the under five minute timeout. A heated start between these two teams. Houston has brought it back even at 10 here at Hoffines. We are American. We are the spark that ignites, dazzling, brilliant, intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. To discover your power, you have to innovate, inspire, be up for the challenge, have the drive to achieve and the vision to transform, to unleash your power, boldly forge ahead to a place where nothing holds you back. This is the University of Houston. Welcome to the Powerhouse. At SMU, students and faculty work hand in hand to shape answers to real world challenges. Yes, yeah, so there's no such thing as a lesser person. How can we strengthen human rights around the world? It turns out computer malware is extremely. How do we prevent cyber terrorism? The, the limb comes off. How the can the human body set new records of performance? What can presidents teach us about leadership? From the SMU campus in Dallas, we're shaping the answers that will shape the future of the world. Welcome back to Hoff Heinz Pavilion. A good start here, 10-10 between SMU and Houston. The road team won each of these meetings last year. And the Cougars lead all time 32-23. Yeah, it's kind of what we expected here, you know, Matt. It's uh, up and down action. I, I thought maybe 
SMU might slow it down just a little bit more than they are, but they've gotten to the line and they're a good free throw shooting team. Rebounds are pretty similar. Um, you know, 10 and 10, it's uh, been a great, you know, first start of the quarter. Froling, the leading scorer with four points. Mackenzie Adams had 32 on Tuesday at Cincinnati. She's only taken one shot, which she missed. Yeah, points in the paint, uh, six for SMU and, and two for Houston. So, you know, so far, SMU's done a pretty good job of keeping them out of the paint. They've had, uh, you know, several blocks in there already. But you see that Houston's already played seven, seven players. So um, they're going to go deeper, and, you know, this tempo does favor them. And there's Angela Harris coming off the bench, hitting the three. Here we go. Houston looking to take its first lead of the afternoon. They go inside. They find the offensive rebound. Angela Harris. That's one of the things Coach Huey's been wanting out of the team is to crash the offensive glass and get in there. And that's a, that's a good second possession for them on that. Bolton now for the Mustangs. Shot long. That was from Devery Owens. Offensive foul against Butler. She had the hand extended. Well, I like how Morgan Bolton is playing. She's been very feisty, given, given Harris a lot of trouble at the point. And there she went in there and just laid her body out and took the charge. So great defensive effort by her so far. Morgan Bolton. Now Owens from the top of the key. Jasmine Harris forward. Very fast closeout by SMU so far on this dribble penetration. Too both. long from Jacqueline Blake, and it's Cougar ball. Yeah, both teams kind of playing at a bit of a frantic pace. There's no doubt that both coaches have said they've gotten the energy and the effort from both of their teams, but now you got to go back and say, how about the execution? 13 on the shot clock. And another three-pointer, Jasmine Harris. Well, she's been on fire lately. Uh, leads the freshman in scoring in the American Athletic Conference. They need that. Two for two this afternoon. Froling good position. She now has six. Well, that's what I'd like to see a little bit more of. Take their time, run their high-low game, and, and pound the post. Houston with its first lead. Backdoor cut. And a good finish from Jasmine Spencer. She has eight off the bench. Well, Jasmine Harris made a great backdoor cut that time. One of the things that Coach Travis said, I don't want any backdoor cuts in this game. And there's one right there that he, he wants to get back. Missed by Deja Thomas. And Houston gains possession as they go to the bench. Well, Deja Thomas has been um, an anchor for this team. She's the best defensive player they've got on the interior. And she put on six pounds of muscle this, this past uh, summer as a freshman. And, and, and really, they just need a little more scoring out of her. They've been using her more as a defense and a rebounder. But I think if, if she could score a little bit more, it would take pressure off of Froling and Adams. Little switch to a zone now. Just short from Harris that time. Somehow when it left her hands, I thought she'd make it. Now good hustle back defensively. That was Jacqueline Blake denying throwing and it's UH basketball. Another inadvertent pass. I don't, I really don't understand that. There's nothing there. I mean, they, they got her covered. There's, there's not a pass. So a little three two defense. It rolls off from Brian Kaufman. Had a good look at it. Mackenzie Adams. 
Froling. No whistle, and she has two more. Well, she backed into her, but um, that was a little bit of acting by the big girl. Now eight points for Alicia Froling and a turnover from UH. Good touch from Mackenzie Adams falling over the end line. Well, she has a high arcing shot. The higher the arc, the more chances you have of making a shot in basketball. And that's why she's one of the best shooters in the American. Had 16 in the fourth quarter Tuesday at Cincinnati, but it was not enough. A two point loss. And now a shooting foul goes for the Cougars. Nice take by Jacqueline Blake. She, she went in and got the contact, went north and south, drew the foul, got to the free throw line. Second season at UH after one year at Miami Dade Community College. Also spent one year at Daytona State College as we see three changes for Ronald Huey and the Cougars. Well, Coach Travis already has his coat off, if that's any indication. Talked a lot about what does this win, what would a win on this road mean, on the road mean, and you know, like it's not gonna make or break his season, but he certainly, you know, really wants to get a road win. So they're, they're pretty desperate to put it all out there. Blake was just 37% from the free throw line before making those two. Owens has had a few opportunities from deep today. She misses that one. But the Mustangs win it back. Yeah, I'm not really understanding Owens' shot selection so far. Um, she hasn't made the first two, so why? I mean, I just think get in the rhythm. Find out where, where they, they, I guess she's going to prove me wrong, but that's, I might give her a little seat there and kind of have a little chat with her. The fourth miss here in the early going for DeVry Owens. A graduate transfer who played the last few seasons at Utah. Cougars leading by one. Closing second to this first quarter. And miss at the buzzer from Angela Harris. One point lead for Houston. Great up and down action so far. I mean, there are three point shots and it's pretty much what we talked about at the beginning of the game. So 17-16, it's everything we hope for. We are American. We are the spark that ignites, dazzling, brilliant, intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. To discover your power, you have to innovate, inspire, be up for the challenge, have the drive to achieve, and the vision to transform. To unleash your power, boldly forge ahead to a place where nothing holds you back. This is the University of Houston. Welcome to the Powerhouse. At SMU, students and faculty work hand in hand to shape answers to real world challenges. Yes, yeah, so there's no such thing as a lesser person. How can we strengthen human rights around the world? It turns out computer malware is extremely. How do we prevent cyber terrorism? The, the limb comes off. How the can the human body set new records of performance? What can presidents teach us about leadership? From the SMU campus in Dallas, we're shaping the answers that will shape the future of the world. Welcome back, a Saturday afternoon in Houston on the And a good cause 
being taken by both teams as today is coaching for literacy game with the hashtag fight for literacy among elementary age students. We were told that a player on the men's team for SMU, Jonathan Wilfong, started the program in high school back in Memphis in 2012. So if you see players wearing green wristbands, that means they participated in the Coaching for Literacy program. Yeah, the coaches have green on. Some of the players do too. It's, it's close to both of their hearts. I know Coach Huey talked about the time that he, uh, had, he taught his grandmother to read and uh, try to read at a higher level. So literacy is a big problem in our country. And I know both teams go out to a lot of the great schools in town and help them read and, and really work hard in the community. So a great cause for a great day. Houston up by a point as we start the second quarter. Cheyenne Butler in the front court. SMU switched to a 1-2-2 two, two defense and using uh, Froling in the middle as the anchor of the defense. Good ball handle as she went down, but Butler maintains possession. That was Mariah Mitchell missing from the corner. I thought it was good ball movement. That was a good possession by Houston. They didn't make the shot, but I liked their ball movement and the way they worked that zone. Cammie Mickens now for SMU. Froling. That's her move right there, that little spin move right down the heart of the defense. She is money in the bank. Well, Froling needed four for a thousand. She's up to 10 on the afternoon to lead all scorers. And a second chance points for Houston. Offensive rebound and a putback from Jacqueline Blake. It's not many times you see SMU not get the defensive boards like that, but Houston's been on alert to rebound more, and that was a good job. Perry. Strength from Adams. That was long from Deja Thomas. I don't I don't really know why everyone's in such a big hurry here. <laughs> you know, I just if if you could just I know it's because they want it so bad, but if they could just realize to settle down, reset, move the basketball, less dribble, more passes. That's that's how you win. There we go. Yeah, Coach Huey told us they use a 14 second shot clock in practice. So you can see UH playing at the frenetic pace, but with SMU's size, different objectives. Yeah, I mean, there's a mismatch right now on Froling in there, and she's she's working hard right there. There's a little high-low action. That's that's their game, and Thomas did the right thing. They, they took away the high-low, and she put it on the dribble drive. They're just not getting a lot of offense right now from Thomas. I don't think she has her confidence up at that level. I know she's had some family illness uh, that she's had to deal with here lately, so she's probably got a pretty heavy heart. Froling with the offensive board, tries the scoop, it's off to the left. And now the Cougars run. Cheyenne Butler. Good Cerithia block. Hawkins off the mark. Good block out by Adams that time. little switch there to the man-to-man -man and and uh, Houston's playing extremely physically Froling shifted that pivot foot our referees today Barb Joe Smith Joseph Vasily and Bob Enterline I like that substitution right now I like to see Collins come back in uh, I just love her and and Froling in there with the two towers of power uh, and then maybe, maybe they can slow down and get a little post action. Collins, number 15, is six foot five. Froling is six foot three. And the pressure leads to a turnover against Cheyenne Butler. It's Mustang basketball. Well, they've been mixing up the pressure on their point guard and uh, really trying to stress her out. I do like the way Butler plays. That was just an unfortunate turnover. 
Tammy Mickens, now Perry. A deep two. And it stays on SMU's side. Yeah, I talked to Froley one time and I said, do you just love rebounding or what? And she said, my dad just, you know, we work so hard. He just said, hey, if you if you want to play basketball, you got to go in there and rebound to get more opportunities. If you can't, if you don't get the ball, then just go rebound it. And she said that's just been, you know, ingrained in us as kids. Impressive take there, Mackenzie Adams. Well, they, they've been all over Adams and her, her ability to get to the rim that time was great. A good move to get open, but then Butler misses the 10 footer. Behind the back from Adams, then she lost it. Here come the Cougars. And stolen right back by SMU. Adams. And she's called for an offensive foul. She cannot believe it. Well, the rule in basketball, here she goes. She really hasn't moved the defense at all. I mean, that's a close call there, but she did lower her shoulder. And the thing is, you have to tilt the offense and then counter and then attack it. And, and they, they're just not patient enough with that. They want to drive and get it right away. And good things take time. Mustangs lead by a point. Active hands from Perry force the loose ball. But then a kick against SMU gives UH the basketball. Mickens and Perry have been causing some havoc here. Just willing to get on the ground and, and scrape it out and their, their hands have been highly active. We haven't seen too many out-of-bounds plays. And, you know, the, the sign of a good team is being able to cash in on these out-of-bounds sets. Thrown right in between, and it's SMU ball. Well, one person thinks she's going this way, and she's really going the other way, so... Communication is a big key of that. Mariah Mitchell threw it away. Turnover is a problem for both teams, both around 20 per game this season. Adams heating up, and that's a deep two. That's coming off a screen, high arcing shot. That's, that's how you draw it up right there. Angela Harris off the mark, but another offensive board for UH. And the second one is good. Mariah Mitchell, junior guard from McKinney, Texas. Just about 30 miles north of SMU. I think both of these coaches tonight want to get out on that floor and play. They're both up. They're both screaming. I, I, they're, they're more animated than I've seen them. Rolling. All even at 22. Jasmine Harris deflected. All defended by Kiara Perry. And now we have our under five minute timeout. The scoring has slowed down a bit. But we're even here, under five left in the first half. At SMU, students and faculty work hand in hand to shape answers to real world challenges. Yes, yeah, so there's no such thing as a lesser person. How can we strengthen human rights around the world? It turns out computer malware is extremely. How do we prevent cyber terrorism? The, the limb comes off. How the can the human body set new records of performance? What can presidents teach us about leadership? From the SMU campus in Dallas, we're shaping the answers that will shape the future of the world. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. 
the opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. To discover your power, you have to innovate, inspire, be up for the challenge, have the drive to achieve and the vision to transform. To unleash your power, boldly forge ahead to a place where nothing holds you back. This is the University of Houston. Welcome to the Powerhouse. Now the standings here in the American, UConn at the top. USF also in the top 25. Yeah, they're, they're currently ranked uh, 23 and 22 on the national polls, USA Today and Coaches Poll. Temple, though, has had a kind of surprising, really tough start at 5-0. and oh. And they, we definitely have a distinction between the top and the half of the bracket and the lower half of the bracket. SMU will host USF on Wednesday up in Dallas. And UH will visit UConn next Saturday up in Connecticut, the only meeting between the teams. Well, that's always an exciting place to be. But, you know, UConn is just an outstanding team with one of the great coaches ever, ever, ever in the game. And it's just tough playing them night in and night out in this league. Uh, you know, it, it's good and it's bad. The good is that they are the greatest team, you know, in the country. And the bad part is that you have to play them. And uh, the scores aren't that tight. So I think it would be the same if they were in any conference, you know, in, in the country. They would get, they would beat other teams similarly. But um, we have to learn from it. And other teams just have to all get better. There's Ronald Huey. An inbound play here for Houston. Just in and out for Angela Harris. And a bit long from Mackenzie Adams. Bolton. Well, that's high octane offense for sure. I mean, what, what these teams are doing, they're playing their hearts out right now. It's just, um, they're not getting their shots to fall, but they have tons of effort. Good work on the interior. That's a big time finish right there. Two players on her. She goes up strong and finishes at the rim. Deja Thomas for SMU. And then she's called for a block on the baseline on the other end. I think I like how SMU's defensive philosophy is to keep them on one side of the court. Here they just, you know, she, she didn't need to swat at the ball. You know, she had good position. Just cut the court off, put your foot out of bounds, and stop it. Brian Kaufman departs for UH. Houston's a dangerous team anytime you play them because they can dribble, drive, or shoot the three. And if they, if they mentally get going in both of those arenas, it's just with a little ball movement right there. Good touch, Jasmine Harris. She now has 10. She's off impressive. The bench. Impressive player. She's a local kid, Freeport, Texas, south of here, played at Brazos Sport High School. Well, the American Athletic Conference got it right when they named her Player of the Week back to back weeks because she's smooth, one smooth customer. SMU sticking with the high-low. Bolton, nothing but net. Morgan Bolton, the senior. Well, they must be working on their shooting technique there at SMU because that's a nice-looking shot, too. She's on the board with two points on the afternoon. Now a high screen. It was deflected on its way out. 
And it's still Cougar basketball. You know, Collins doesn't get a lot of people to talk about her, but if we can focus on the way she's playing defense for this team, she's that time they had a high post screen and she she went down there all the way to the rim and, and helped defend that player. So she's she's working hard for SMU. Junior from Melbourne, Australia. And a jump ball. Good hustle to get on top of it by Deja Thomas. Well, Deja Thomas made that happen, and there she is sacrificing her body again, getting on the floor and getting that tied up. She's from Dallas, played at Skyline High School. A one time Miss Basketball in the state of Texas. Coach likes her physicality and how she plays, even though she's pretty lean and mean. Uh, she's not afraid to get physical. And now a whistle, and it's going to go against SMU. Ron Huey saw it that way as well. This game is uh, one of the more physical games I've seen. There's bodies flying left and right. There's post picking and pinning and lots of stuff happening underneath. So these officials, which have been great all year in the American, have done a good job of keeping it under control. Froling checks in for Perry after a short rest. A good drive, but off the mark from Cheyenne Butler. Adams double teamed. Froling now on the wing. Thomas off the mark that time. Cougars love to run it. Ideally, they get 100 or more possessions a game. Wide open three. Just off for Jasmine Harris. And it goes using the glass. Perfectly, Morgan Bolton. Well, this is the way the game has gone, which is full throttle. Full throttle to the basket and just toss it up there and bank. And she called it bank, too. She said, I'm, I'm going to bank this one as I'm falling out of bounds. But I, I do like the energy that she's brought to this team tonight, today. Uh, Morgan has been all over the defensive end. Um, she, she's, got, she's had a nice-looking jumper. There she took it to the rim. So she's show, she show, I think talk, coach has been talking, hey, we need more people to score, and she's proven she can do it. Now four points for Morgan Bolton. Mustangs lead by four. And a good three. Angela Harris over the outstretched hand of Alicia Froling. Yeah, Angela Harris is another three-star recruit that they uh, have recruited here at Houston, and she's very capable of stroking it. And a whistle goes. It's going to be an SMU inbounds. That was not an easy three. Frolin got out there six foot three forward to defend the three making the deep make all the more impressive from Harris. Now Bolton, one point SMU lead under a minute left in the first half. Good defending, Harris forced the steal. About a one second differential for the shot clock. There's Jasmine Harris. Back to Angela Harris. Good passing. And off the front iron. But a good athletic rebound. Jasmine Harris now under 10 seconds left. The shot clock is off. Mitchell from the corner. Now Mackenzie Adams. And she did not realize 
She ran out of time. And that's the end of the first half here from Hoff Heinz Pavilion. And SMU goes in with a one-point lead. A very good back and forth first 20 minutes here from Houston. We'll wait to join momentarily. My SMU head coach, Travis Mays, who will be with our Angela Beck as soon as they can coordinate. Froling was the leading scorer in that first half for SMU with 10. Harris also had 10. That's Angela Harris for Houston. And now let's go to Angela Beck. Coach, you had your coat off there in the first few minutes of this game. Talk about the physicality of this game. Well, I think it's real physical, but we're not taking advantage of it on our end of the floor. We have our wings out there and our post is getting physical. They're demanding the ball, but for whatever reason, we're reversing it back to the top, so we're missing an option down there that we need to try to get in the second half. So how can you settle them down just a bit? But get them to slow down. I think if the ball gets reversed too soon, they're taking away that look, as I just mentioned. If they just, you know, they know what they're looking for, just because Houston's getting a little bit physical and they're taking away the first option, we go to the second option, I think we'll be fine. How about uh, stopping their threes? They know the game plan. It's a matter of what we're doing. I think we're stunning on the penetrator just a little bit too high, and we don't give ourselves enough room to get back. So we need to bring that back a little bit and trust our help defense that's already sitting in the paint. It's a great game, Coach. Good luck. Thank you very much. That was Angela Beck with Travis Mays. Plenty to come up at halftime between these Texas rivals. SMU with a one-point lead as we go to the break. We are American. We are the spark that ignites. Dazzling. Brilliant. Intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. Haley out in here at the American Digital Network studio with an all new episode of The Rise. Thanks for tuning in. We have a full show in store for you today. The college football season ended last week with a national championship in Tampa, but fans of the American can still follow some of their favorite players through the NFL playoffs as this weekend's AFC and NFC championship games are stocked with players from American Athletic Conference schools. The NFC championship between the Green Bay Packers and Atlanta Falcons could be particularly interesting to fans of East Carolina as Green Bay rookie cornerback Josh Hawkins could find himself lined up against his former college teammate Justin Hardy of the Falcons. Hardy has taken on a greater role in the Falcons' potent passing game in recent weeks and had four touchdown receptions in his second year in the league, while Hawkins has stepped into the defensive backfield rotation in Green Bay, seeing action in the Packers' dime package last Sunday against the Dallas Cowboys. Hardy is not the only receiver making an impact for the Falcons. Former SMU standout Aldrick Robinson had a breakout regular season with over 300 yards and two touchdowns. Former UConn wideout Nick Williams and cornerback Leedy Ray Wilson are both on the active roster as well and hope to get into the lineup Sunday against the Packers. In the AFC Championship, there should be no fewer than seven players from American schools taking the field. The Pittsburgh Steelers have former Cincinnati defensive end Ricardo Matthews and former Temple linebacker Tyler Matakevich in the regular rotation on defense. While on offense, they have veteran running back D'Angelo Williams from Memphis and rookie wide receiver Demarcus Ayers from Houston. The Patriots have also benefited from the play of a rookie from Houston as linebacker Alandon Roberts has become a fixture on the New England defense. Roberts joins veteran kicker Steven Goskowski from Memphis and long snapper Joe Cardona of Navy on a pass team that is playing in its sixth straight AFC championship. While we root on American alums that are living out their dreams in the NFL playoffs, a lot to talk about as conference play continues to heat up on the hardwood. Several games came down to the final possession this past week, including Tulsa's last-second thriller at Temple. Sterling Taplin's layup with four seconds to play lifted the Golden Hurricane to its second straight win and elevated Taplin to American Player of the Week honors. 
Cincinnati extended its winning streak to eight games with two wins last week, including a thriller against an SMU team receiving votes in the national polls. The Bearcats knocked off both SMU and East Carolina behind the front court duo of Gary Clark and Kyle Washington. Clark had 18 points versus the Mustangs, while Washington tallied his sixth double-double of the year against the Pirates. On Wednesday, the number 20 Bearcats will try and tie their longest home court winning streak under Mick Cronin when they host Temple. UC will be gunning for its 19th straight home win in a rematch of both teams' conference opener. Not to be outdone, SMU owns a 15-game home court winning streak at Moody Coliseum and will put it on the line against UConn on Thursday night. The Ponies will then welcome Houston to Moody on Saturday in a key conference and intrastate showdown. Two of the winningest coaches in NCAA history will meet on Thursday as well. Tubby Smith and Kelvin Sampson have a combined 1,118 victories between them, with Smith holding a slight edge, 570 to 548. The pair have known each other for over five decades, and the respect the two have for one another runs deep. Smith is one of two coaches to have guided five different programs to the NCAA tournament, while Sampson has taken three programs to the big dance himself. With Memphis and Houston, both coaches know the opportunity exists this season to dance once more. Over to the women's side where UConn and Temple remain undefeated in league play, while Cincinnati and USF are not far behind as we enter the third week of conference action. Top-ranked UConn broke its own NCAA record with its 91st consecutive victory on Saturday, defeating SMU at Moody Coliseum in Dallas. UConn junior Gabby Williams claimed American Player of the Week honors on Monday for the second time this season after averaging 15 points and over 11 rebounds per game in a 2-0 week for the Huskies. American Freshman of the Week honors went to KK Wright from UCF. The rookie tied her career high in points, assists, and field goals in UCF's win over Houston last Wednesday, the night's lone game of the week. The Orlando native has a team leading 70 assists and helped UCF surpass its win total from the last three seasons with the victory over the Cougars. The week ahead sees USF wrapping up a three-game homestand with matchups against Memphis on Tuesday and Louisville on Sunday. The Bulls extended their home winning streak to 13 games last week with Saturday's win over East Carolina. They have not dropped a home game since hosting top-ranked UConn back in January of 2016. Temple winners of nine straight games look to continue their winning ways this week, taking on Houston and Memphis. Senior guard Fayonda Fitzgerald continues to lead the Owls and is tied for first in the American with 20 points per game in league play. And out to the pitch for the first time in a couple of months where the MLS Super Draft wrapped up on Friday. Five players from the American Athletic Conference were selected in the first two rounds. UConn had a pair of players taken in the first round in defender Jake Nerwinski, who went seventh overall, and midfielder Kwame Awuha, taken 16th overall. Nerwinski was selected by the Vancouver Whitecaps, while Awuha was picked by New York City FC. UConn has now had 36 players drafted by an MLS club since the league began in 1997. The second round saw three American players selected in USF teammates Marcus Epps and Lindo Mfeka and goalkeeper Jake McGuire from Tulsa. Epps was a third pick in the second round by the Philadelphia Union, while Mfeka was selected three picks later by the San Jose Earthquakes. McGuire was the eighth pick in the second round and 30th overall by the Houston Dynamo. The NWSL draft also took place last week and featured the selection of two UConn players. Midfielder Rachel Hill is headed out west to the Portland Thorns as the fourth pick in the second round, while fellow Husky Stephanie Ribeiro, the seventh pick in the second round and 17th overall, was selected by Kansas City. A pair of 2016 Mac Herman Trophy semifinalists, Hill and Ribeiro garnered All-America honors for the second straight year after helping UConn do its second American Conference Championship and regular season title in three years. The indoor track and field season got back underway and four athletes took home weekly honors this week. On the men's side, Houston's Cameron Burrell won his second weekly honor of the season. Burrell won the 60-meter dash with a time of 6.66 seconds. That time is the top in the American and sixth in the NCAA so far this year. Field Athlete of the Week honors went to Adrian Valves from Cincinnati. The junior Bearcat won the pole vault at the Kentucky Invitational with a mark of 5.43 meters. That mark is also first in the conference and puts Valves at sixth in the NCAA. The Women's Track Athlete of the Week is also a Bearcat. 
Brianna Robinson finished third at the Kentucky Invitational in the 400 meter, but her time of 53.70 is first in the conference and second in the NCAA as she finished behind two post-collegiate runners in the race. UCF's Chelsea Goborn took home the Women's Field Athlete of the Week accolades with a distance of 19.84 meters in the weight throw. Goborn's throw was a career best, second in the conference, and 16th in the NCAA. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. The 2017 American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship tickets are now on sale for March 3rd through the 7th at Mohegan Sun Arena. Get your tickets today to watch all 11 teams in action fighting for an automatic berth to the NCAA tournament. Tickets start as low as $99 and can be purchased online at mohegansun.com, on Ticketmaster, or by calling 1-800-743-3000. Let the games begin. We'll see you in March. At SMU, students and faculty work hand in hand to shape answers to real world challenges. Yeah, so there's no such thing as a lesser person. How can we strengthen human rights around the world? It turns out computer malware is extremely. How do we prevent cyber terrorism? If the limb comes off. How can the human body set new records of performance? What can presidents teach us about leadership? From the SMU campus in Dallas, we're shaping the answers that will shape the future of the world. The American Athletic Conference Championship is right around the corner, taking place March 9th through the 12th at the Excel Center in Hartford, Connecticut, as all 11 American teams will compete for the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Tickets are priced as low as $199. Get yours today online by visiting www.excelcenter.com in person at the Excel Center box office or by telephone at 877-522-8499. We look forward to seeing you in March. To discover your power, you have to innovate, inspire, be up for the challenge, have the drive to achieve and the vision to transform, to unleash your power, boldly forge ahead to a place where nothing holds you back. This is the University of Houston. Welcome to the Powerhouse. We are American. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. Welcome back to Hoff Allen's Pavilion. Almost after the start of the second half, let's go down. Angela Beck is with Ron Huey. What did you say to your team at halftime? Just continue to fight. Continue to fight. That's the thing that we talked about. On every single possession, do not take one play off. You said one of your non-negotiables was rebounding. Talk about your team's rebounding. It, it is, because when we get 45 or more, we win games. So they know we got to contest every single shot, rebound the basketball as hard as you can, and continue to do the hard thing. Don't take the easy way out. Any changes on defense to stop rolling? 
No, we just got to get up and play her harder. Uh, be able to take her because some of her shots come off offensive rebounds, so we got to catch her at the high post before she gets around the start. Good luck, Coach. Thank you so much. Thanks to head coach Ron Huey with Angela Beck. Now the first half stats. A few things stand out. Three-pointers, of course. Houston would like to get 30 a game. Well, they had 14. They made five. SMU 0 for 6 from deep. And then Houston basically neck and neck with SMU. One of the best rebounding teams in the conference. Teams even in turnover. So I think statistically uh, a pretty good half for Houston. SMU shooting the ball better with more interior looks. It was a frenetic start to this one. Back and forth. Both teams slowed down a little bit in that second period. But SMU takes a one-point lead into the second half. They won here last year. A two-point win in January. And UH got revenge at Moody Coliseum late February. A nine-point victory. Now, Angela, as we welcome you back to courtside, your thoughts on that first half here at Hoff Hines. Well, we'll get your thoughts in a little bit as we have a good look at Sarethia Hawkins about to inbound this. As the Cougars open the second half from our left to our right. Well, both coaches were extremely pleased with each team's performance. Um, SMU needs to make a few adjustments, I think, more than even Houston. They were happy with, he wants to take more threes than what they took. I don't know if you heard him talk, but he wants to fire up. He's got to make eight more threes. So, I mean, I think they're just going to let it fly here. And that's why they have the confidence to shoot that. Well, they took 14 in that first 20 minutes. We'll see what the next 20 minutes have in store for us. And there's an early three off the mark from Hawkins. Well, I think it's going to rain here threes. SMU needs to do a little better job. I think they're coming out in a man-to-man -man here because they weren't covering up the threes as much when they were playing in their zone. Butler was off. Strong rebound for Morgan Bolton, the senior. And a great seal off that time. That was Stephanie an excellent Collins. float pass. I mean, she, she just took a little speed off it and floated it in. Collins had great hands. When she catches it like that, it's going to be a finish. Yeah, impressive from such a good shooter as well, Angela, that she passed up the shot. I think she had her coach in her ear, actually. I saw him <laughs> yelling at her, so I'm not sure he didn't tell her to give it to Collins. Three-point Mustang lead. And a shot clock violation. Good team defense. Well, great team defense that time. Cheyenne Butler gets a little bit dribble happy. I do like her change of pace and the way that she kind of, you know, dribbles in and po pops back out. But it's just a little bit too much. She got it caught on that side and just uh, couldn't get rid of it. Bolton. Adams on the wing. A putback is off from Froling. Here come the Cougs. And a charge called against Jasmine Harris. That uh, was a very physical play here. She drives. You can see she's outside the restricted area. She has both feet set. That's an excellent call by the official. One of the upperclassmen leaders, Kiara Perry, Selfless play there, taking the charge. Well, one of the things Coach Travis has talked to his team about was settling down. Uh, I, I see the clear message here in the first couple possessions that's to get the ball inside. Uh, Collins has touched the ball more than she touched it in the entire first half in these first two plays. So I like what he's talked to his team about, and I like what I'm seeing so far from SMU. This is as calm as it's been all day. Adams, 32 on Tuesday at Cincinnati. 
Another good entry pass there to Collins. She draws a foul. Well, I guess that's why they have half times, right? Uh, nice, nice floater pass again. She squares her shoulders and um, gets the foul. 45% from the free throw line on the season for Stephanie Collins, who, like Froling, played at the Australia Institute of Sport. Yeah, she's been injured. She's had a shoulder injury and has had a tough time coming back from it. I know she and coach had some conversations. She felt like her coach forgot about her and he let her know, you know, he hasn't forgotten about her and she's increasingly getting more time and uh, she's extremely dedicated to what she's doing. The coach is like, it's okay. Mitchell and Blake both check in for UH. Butler is off. Along with Kaufman. It's kind of surprising to see Collins not shoot the ball well from the free throw line. Deep three is off from Harris. 4 point SMU lead. Actually we're running a set here. Little screen across, isolation there for the big girl, Froling. And uh, nice job of SMU coming out of that time, uh, out of the halftime, pounding the ball into the post, which we talked about them doing early. And that's a great timeout by Coach Huey. Froling leads all scorers with 12 on five of nine shooting. It's been all SMU early in this third quarter. At SMU, students and faculty work hand in hand to shape answers to real world challenges. Yes, yeah, so there's no such thing as a lesser person. How can we strengthen human rights around the world? It turns out computer malware is extremely. How do we prevent cyber terrorism? The, the limb comes off. How the can the human body set new records of performance? What can presidents teach us about leadership? From the SMU campus in Dallas, we're shaping the answers that will shape the future of the world. We are America. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. Discover your power, you have to innovate, inspire, be up for the challenge, have the drive to achieve and the vision to transform, to unleash your power, boldly forge ahead to a place where nothing holds you back. This is the University of Houston. Welcome to the Powerhouse. Welcome back to Houston with Angela Beck. I'm Matt Peterson. Six-point lead for SMU over UH. And now a look at upcoming broadcasts here on the American Digital Network beginning Tuesday, Cincinnati at UCF. Yeah, and then you got Houston at Memphis and, and Tulane. I'll be at the January 21st game with Memphis at, at SMU. I'm kind of a regional color person here so I get a lot of SMU and a lot of Houston and a little bit of Tulane but they'll be at Cincinnati and that's a little far for me to go <laughs> after the barn burner between Cincinnati and SMU on Tuesday you may extend your area of work that was a classic game well, great, great use of timeout for SMU and great use of, uh, of the uh, halftime. They came out on a 5-0 run. We haven't really seen any big runs in this game, and that's about the biggest run we've seen. So by them being diligent, slowing down a bit, getting it to their post players and pounding it home, they've, they've changed a little bit of the complexion of the game. Six-point deficit for UH. You know, let's see what Coach Huey, Huey's got Houston doing. They need to, you know, do a better job of defending that high-low. And then they also need to get some quality shots. Foul trouble's not really an issue yet for SMU. That was the second 
on Mackenzie Adams. Froling fouled out late at Cincinnati on Tuesday. Yeah, it's interesting to me that Collins wants to get around the front of Blake when I feel like just let her have the ball and defend her. You're 6'6". You don't need to worry about her getting the possession. She's not a, a big-time scorer for them. So um, I, I don't know. I, that's that's kind of a not, not a necessary foul. Two quick fouls there against SMU. The Houston bench outscoring SMU 17-2, but the Mustangs still lead by six. Mitchell out to Harris. And it rims out for Mitchell, the longest tenured UH player. Today's her 77th career game. Adams finding that wing here in the second half. Most ball movement we've seen all game. Adams reigns from the corner. There you go. That's what happens when you share the basketball. You work it inside out. Great defensive strip from behind by Perry. Two-man break to the big girl. And Collins will go to the free throw line. Very unselfish fast break that time. This, this happened because Bolton took it in off the dribble drive, set up her shooter on the outside. Just great, great offensive possession by SMU. Adams had four threes. She was four of eight Tuesday at Cincinnati. That's her first this afternoon, but on the replay, the ball goes out of the picture. Yeah. So much art. Yeah, well, that's what I like. I mean, young kids that are playing basketball, they have to realize the higher the arc, the better chance they have of making the shot. Collins makes both. She's three of four. Got a big cheer from her teammates on the bench after making both, and she subs out. So now he brings in another, a 6'6 uh, Bradshaw. Now she, she sat out last year due to a transfer and uh, has had four coaches in all her years. So she, she's had a tough time, but she's another fine player. She, she can give them good minutes, and nothing like having three posts like that, huh? Biggest lead of the day is nine points, and now it's cut to seven. Good fade away from Jacqueline Blake. I like Bol Bolton's really taking charge of the offense now. Froling with the right hand. And now the Cougars on the run. Three on one. And a good finish from Jasmine Harris. Well, that's Cougar basketball right there. Take it off the rim and put it in transition. And great finish by the freshman. Just a beautiful shot for Mackenzie Adams. After the three, she hits the baseline jumper for two. Well, they can hurt you in a lot of different ways. I like this lineup that he has right now on the floor. Harris with Harris. Like I said, play behind her, make her make a move. And the shot, did it get off? I think a foul was called just before the shot clock violation buzzer sounded. Not sure what the call was on that. Um, looks like they they count the bucket. I think they're going to count the basket as we go to the under five minute timeout. The referees are confirmed. We'll sort it out. At SMU, students and faculty work hand in hand to shape answers to real world challenges. Yes, yeah, so there's no such thing as a lesser person. How can we strengthen human rights around the world? It turns out computer malware is extremely. How do we prevent cyber terrorism? If the limb comes off. How the can the human body set new records of performance? What can presidents teach us about leadership? 
From the SMU campus in Dallas, we're shaping the answers that will shape the future of the world. We are America. The conference of opportunity. The opportunity to chase dreams. The opportunity to make your mark and change the game. Because that's power. We are power. To discover your power, you have to innovate, inspire, be up for the challenge, have the drive to achieve, and the vision to transform. To unleash your power, boldly forge ahead to a place where nothing holds you back. This is the University of Houston. Welcome to the Powerhouse. Welcome back to Hoff Heinz Pavilion here yes. in Houston. The basket will count. Angela Beck getting confirmation from the referee crew. As come over and one shot will be coming out of this yeah she she uh they counted the bucket look reviewed the monitors the rebound came before the the uh, time expired right here or yeah that's these are replays that we're running sorry and they counted the bucket and she'll have one free throw um on top of it and yeah, that so, was a nice little highlight package of mackenzie adams who's really lit up the third quarter and as that was going, we were getting some confirmations from the referee crew, so sorry about the mix-up. But uh, Bucket's good with the free throw to come. Well, that's, that's exactly what Houston needed. An off offensive rebound, put back, and, and uh, another opportunity to get the line. I wouldn't be surprised to see Houston now maybe put on a little bit of a press. It's not desperation time by any means, but they do need to change a little bit of the complexion of the game. SMU dominating in the paint, 20 to 10 is the advantage. 11 points off turnovers for SMU. And the three point play is converted by Sarethia Hawkins, a sophomore guard out of Moore, Oklahoma. This is their bread and butter. They call it their 55 press. They and it's won turnover. by Jasmine Harris. And with the finger roll, it is cut to four. This is one thing that uh, Coach Travis was concerned about was their ability to beat the pressure. Bolton. And enough strength that time from Zarethia Hawkins of UH. Three is off from Angela Harris, here comes SMU. Owens, inside. And a good left-handed finish from Clara Bradshaw. That's a good look at her athleticism. You know, she's a good, strong body, 6'6". Six, six. A lot of people like to have her on in their team. And it's won by SMU, here they go the other way. And it's Bolton, it rims out Froling's right there. And she'll draw a foul underneath the hoop. Yeah, I don't know. For some reason, I wanted her to kick that to Froling, and she didn't. And, uh, you yeah, know, she's going pretty fast, but, um, you yeah, know, it's just usually something she'll make most of the time. Almost her step seemed off. She had too much momentum coming into the basket. As three changes are made by Ron Huey. They get the ball in. Mackenzie Adams. She's up to 11 points on the day on five of seven shooting. Mickens now playing a little point. Great defense by Houston that time. They tripled up, throwing, and took it away from her. Behind the head pass that time from Cheyenne Butler. Another turnover from UH. Here comes Adams. And a reach-in foul goes against Mariah Mitchell. Well, basketball is a game of runs. And it's the team that stops the other team's runs that wins the game. And 
It seems like Houston kind of, they get going and then they just make a couple inadvertent, you know, mistakes that dig them back in the hole. With Adams at the line. Coach Beck, how would you describe the different rebuilding strategies by these two programs at the moment? Well, Coach Huey's had three years, so I mean, his strategy is he's going to go out and get the, you know, the best recruits that he can, but, you know, he's going after blue star, you know, three star kind of players, but he also has, uh, he wants kids that have motor, and um, I think almost every coach wants kids with motor, but um, I think that with a uh, with, with Coach Travis, you know, he, he's taken a little bit of a strategy where he's he's going to try to mold the ones that he's got. He's ha He has a lot of older players, and he's really going to try to work with it and maybe adjust his system a little bit to meet his players. Another turnover on the other end from UH after Adams hit both free throws. SMU is also in the bonus for the final two minutes of this third period, and they lead by eight. Adams a bit long, Froling with the offensive board and the putback. Well, that's just a big time rebound, hard nosed rebound. Just skied up, got it, and put it back. Froling, a game best 14 points on the day on 6 of 11 shooting. 10 point lead for SMU. You know, I talk about gears that players have. Froling has fifth gear all game. Not many kids can put that on the floor. A lot of kids are only going to give you fifth gear in transition or, you know, they're not going to give you fifth gear in defense. Froling's going to give you fifth gear. Look at that. First one down the floor. First finish. Great hands. Great look up that time. Excellent transition. Cammie Mickens, the senior guard out of Westlake, Texas, with a good pass over the top. Well, right now it's 55 seconds left. Let's see what these guys do. They could get a two for one or if they go for just one. Off the side of the backboard, but a foul called, and Harris will go to the line. Good things happen when Harris, Jasmine Harris, touches the wall. She makes lots of things happen. She, she's pretty effortless in what she does. She's got two or three different speeds she can work on. She's got a good inside game, good outside game. I, I think this is going to be one of the you know great players that we have in our league. She went 33 in one in her last three years in conference at Brazos Fort High School down in Freeport. Two time All State selection. Good athlete, also played softball, volleyball, and track and field. That's a good get for Coach Huey. And I like the fact he's given her lots of minutes as a youngster. Some coaches won't do that. You know, they make them earn their stripes, and he knows she's a good enough player to make a difference. Here comes SMU, under 40 left, about a 14 second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. Mickens, running the show. Tevry Owens, back to Mickens. A rebound and a putback from the substitute, Clara Bradshaw, out of Emory, Texas, about 70 miles east of Dallas. 13 point lead for the Mustangs. Off the mark from deep from Angela Harris. And it stays UH basketball. Under four seconds left here in the third period. At the buzzer. And just off that time from Sarithia Hawkins. So after a back and forth first two periods, SMU takes control here in the third. The excellent pass up to Froling. Froling, they've been getting it to the right people. You know, if you get it to the people that are score, you get good things happen. 2017 American Athletic Conference Women's Basketball Championship tickets are now on sale for March 3rd through the 7th at Mohegan Sun Arena. Get your tickets today to watch all 11 teams in action fighting for an automatic berth to the NCAA tournament. 
Tickets start as low as $99 and can be purchased online at mohegansun.com, on Ticketmaster, or by calling 1-800-743-3000. Let the games begin. We'll see you in March. At SMU, students and faculty work hand in hand to shape answers to real world challenges. Yes, yeah, so there's no such thing as a lesser person. How can we strengthen human rights around the world? It turns out computer malware is extremely. How do we prevent cyber terrorism? The, the limb comes off. How the can the human body set new records of performance? What can presidents teach us about leadership? From the SMU campus in Dallas, we're shaping the answers that will shape the future of the world. To discover your power, you have to innovate, inspire, be up for the challenge, have the drive to achieve, and the vision to transform. To unleash your power, boldly forge ahead to a place where nothing holds you back. This is the University of Houston. Welcome to the Powerhouse. Welcome back to Hoff Hines Pavilion in Houston with former University of Nebraska women's basketball head coach Angela Beck. I'm Matt Peterson. Well, Froling really took over that uh, quarter. There she is on dribble drive, asking for the ball. Nice loft pass into her. Little spin that she likes. Left, left hand toss in. And then, you know, another spin dribble to the hole. And not only is she doing that, but she's rebounding. She's keeping the ball alive. She's just she's playing with all her motor skills i mean she is in 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 the fifth speed fifth gear she became the 23rd smu player to hit 1,000 career points got that out of the way inside the first three minutes and it's up to 16 on the afternoon her season high 24 against bc back in november well, one of the things Coach Huey talked about at halftime was that he wanted to shoot some more threes, and they've been shooting some more threes. Unfortunately, live by the three, die by the three, and uh, they died by the three that quarter. Uh, they didn't shoot it very well. And uh, SMU outscored them 22-10 to 10 in that quarter. Big-time quarter for them. They're going to have to get better shots, maybe get to the line a little bit, and attack off dribble penetration. UH 0 for 7 from deep in that third quarter. Owens, all net. Devry Owens. Well, she's a shooter because she doesn't care what she does. She's going to keep firing it up, and I, I got to give her credit for that. That was a nice little, she, at least she got a, a better shot, like a little, you know, 12-footer. Three years in Utah, now a graduate transfer playing her first season at SMU. Interesting lineup here. Uh, a lot of his subs are on the floor right now. Um, this is fourth quarter. This is this is big time action, and he's got he's got you know a lot of subs. In fact, I don't see a starter out there right now. Jacqueline so, Blake to the line for UH. Coach Beck, it's an interesting storyline. Both Huey and Mays they were assistant coaches together at Texas in 2013 and 14. But there are also some interesting uh, commonalities between some of the assistants on both these current staffs. Well, exactly. They both have a lot of Texas ties. You got Ty Dillard, who uh, was at Texas for uh, Houston, and then you've got for Travis May, you got Edwina Brown. So th those are two pretty good players to have on your staff that can teach these guards what to do. Owens just beats the backcourt timer. And an open three is short. That shot was by the assistant coach, Brant. That's his daughter that's playing right there, number 25. Good hustle to keep it alive and retain possession, Sarethia Hawkins. She's 10th in the American with 7.4 rebounds a game. Well, here, here come the troops. Four set to check in for SMU. I think as a new head coach for Coach Travis, I mean, I, I'm sure he's looking. That's a good group of people. 
hard work in. They deserve to play, but you're still, you know, you're still a little scared. You're like, okay, do I, I don't have this game wrapped up. So I think it was a good move to get his starters back in there. Big block that time from Collins. One right back by UH. Harris wants it on the far side. Can they find her in the corner? Deep three. Big rebound that time from Kiara Perry. Perry showed her athleticism on that. She really got up. Thirteen point SMU lead. A one point lead at halftime has been stretched to 13. Froling, so smooth at the left hand. Yeah, sometimes she gets a little overly aggressive backing in, and that time she backed off a little bit. 18 points, 11 rebounds. It's another double double. And a foul called that time against Kiara Perry. Well, Coach has gotten quality minutes from Perry, from Bolton, from Collins. Uh, that's good to see that he's really he's really gotten the team effort here. Three from the corner. It's off the mark from Jasmine Harris. Another second half miss from deep for the Cougars. And a blocking foul in the backcourt. For Alicia Froling, that's her 13th double-double this year. She's too shy of the SMU record set by Shasta Smothers Johnson 1984-1985 season. Froling herself had 14 last year. She was one shy. That looked painful, but she's being helped up. Morgan Bolton. No, that doesn't look too good. It's like she twisted her knee. Yeah, Houston needs to turn up the defense a little bit. It's 7.25 to go. You know, down 15 points. They, they've got to make something happen now. It's not too late, but they cannot be just hanging out wanting to shoot a three. They've got to get aggressive. Harris. Kaufman. And traveling is the call. One of the things talking to the posts at Houston, they, they don't really want to score too much. And that's a problem for them because if you get it in, you know, you get it into Kaufman or you get it into um, uh, Graves, they, they've got to put it up. They've got to attack the, the other big girls and get them in some trouble. Perry, good ball fake. Stephanie Collins. And she was fouled by Kaufman. Collins, we saw a block earlier in this half. Now we see her go on the inside. Yeah, she's just trying to get some room there. There's not much room to be had, but it shows the fight in those Aussies. They're just very physical. They fight hard. Um, you know, they're used to contact. It's just so physical over there in Australia that they're ready to play like that every night. Angela, she played 28 minutes per game last year. We'll get to that thought in a second as UH pushes the tempo. Good active hands that time from Kiara Perry once again. And then she's fouled. I was starting to say... And Collins has had her minutes cut in half. How do you handle a player that kind of situation? You still need her, but a big re reduction in role. And how do you keep her motivated going from 28 to 14? Well, it 100% it has to do with her injury. She had, when you have a sh shoulder injury, it's probably one of, the, one of the worst injuries you can have in basketball because you need your shoulder for everything. And so, it, you know, one of the things I want to credit him for, he wasn't trying to get some early wins just to have her play. He's protecting his player who he's got more time with. He's making sure she's 100% when she comes back. She didn't like sitting out, but he made the right call. 
Good block that time by Froling, rejecting think, Jacqueline Blake. Has Froling come out today? I don't think she's come out of this game, has she? A little bit. She's had a Maybe. couple short rests at opportune times for SMU. Well, her conditioning must be amazing. I think that's a little bit of a frustration foul by McKenzie. They've been all over her all game. You know, they really respect her outside shot and uh, I think she was tired of them playing her so tight. Well, a 15 point deficit for UH. Under six minutes left here in Houston. Well, they can't find any offense right now. They, you know, they're just not getting open in the inside. They're covering their shooters right now. They, they need to just get a lot of ball movement and protect it. That's a couple times she's had it uh, pop from behind. Yeah, Mickens poked it away. And it was Perry off the other way to draw a foul. That's a good drive, little stutter step. She's kind of clearing her out, but just uh, missed it. Hoffman checks out for the Cougars. That will be Jacqueline Blake to enter. You know, both of these teams only average 60 points a game. Um, it's been a issue for both of them. Not, you know, although I think Houston has more times they've had four players in double figures. You just don't know which players are going to be in the double figures. And then over here, you know, Crowling and Adams have carried the load most of the year, and they're you know they're still carrying it. But I thought Collins did, 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 a, did a good job. Another steal. Here goes Perry. And this time she gets it to go. Perry now six points on the day. Well, Perry's looking good. She's doing a lot defensively. Another timeout for Ron Huey and UH as the deficit stretches to 17. As we see the steal from Perry, she takes it coast to coast for the Mustangs. The American Athletic Conference Championship is right around the corner, taking place March 9th through the 12th at the Excel Center in Hartford, Connecticut, as all 11 American teams will compete for the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Tickets are priced as low as $199. Get yours today online by visiting www.excelcenter.com in person at the Excel Center box office or by telephone at 877-522-8499. We look forward to seeing you in March. At SMU, students and faculty work hand in hand to shape answers to real world challenges. Yes, yeah, so there's no such thing as a lesser person. How can we strengthen human rights around the world? It turns out computer malware is extremely... How popular. do we prevent cyber terrorism? The, the limb comes off How the can the human body set new records of performance? What can presidents teach us about leadership? From the SMU campus in Dallas, we're shaping the answers that will shape the future of the world. To discover your power, you have to innovate, inspire, be up for the challenge, have the drive to achieve, and the vision to transform. To unleash your power, boldly forge ahead to a place where nothing holds you back. This is the University of Houston. Welcome to the Powerhouse. Welcome back to Houston. Mustangs 56, Cougars 39. Evangela Beck on Matt Peterson. Anything standing out to you, Coach, on the stat sheet? Well, I think what stands out is intention. Like, where where is the ball intended to go? Who's the one taking the shot? And I think SMU has proven that their intentions are to go inside. They've had the right people shooting. They've been under a lot more control. And they took control of this game in the second half. Points in the paint. 32 for SMU, 12 for Houston. Houston with a slight lead in second chance points. But that 20-point difference is the difference in this game and then some. Well, I was really kind of worried uh, that SMU couldn't get it together because 
I thought that they they just didn't get the fact of what what they could actually do and to come out and see them execute and really get it down low and pound the, the paint which is where they should have gone all game was was really good I think coach did a great job Houston has not hit a three in the second half they are 0 for 9 from deep yeah I'd like to see Houston now they've got to pick up the pressure they, they need to be trapping they need to be really uh, you know on the defensive end and offensively they need to attack off the dribble they got to get to the line or, or uh, shoot a three. And a shot clock violation. Fresh into the game was Deanna Collins. May have slipped out of her hands. Now that's the most patient I've seen Houston be. And that's not the time that we want them to be patient. Deanna Collins out of Delta City, Oklahoma. Now they need to be pressuring passing lanes, pressuring the ball, you know, doubling down low, lots of things defensively here. Adams off the front end. And a interesting exchange. She sort of patted her chest towards Coach Mays to say sorry. And Mays said, no problem. I have no problem with that shot. Good hands that time by Perry. It's a Houston inbounds on the far side. He's done a good job of mixing up his defenses, SMU. I mean, they've run, run, run a 1-2-2, two, two, a little 2-3, and then a man. I think their man has been most effective, but these little changes have frustrated him just like that. Perry's got the, I think she's the defensive player of the game. She can't make her layups, but she's the defensive player of the game. Another steal for Perry. I've seen Perry play a few times. Uh, didn't realize she was as quick as she is. She, look at her hands. If your hands aren't out, you can't do it. She had her hands in the passing lane. And just, uh, you know, she takes, the, takes that guide hand off the ball too quick. And so she really has a one-handed layup. And I think that's causing her some of the problems in, in her ability to complete it. Sixty percent on the season from the line is Perry. Makes both on that trip. She is four and six, four of six this afternoon. Nineteen point lead for SMU. Yeah, they, they put crawling over there with uh, Harris. And it, I think her long arms and her extensions have really stopped her from being able to get her three open. Open from the corner. Uh, too long, though, from Harris. SMU out on the break again. Adams. And a good block. It was the freshman guard, Jasmine Harris. Yeah, I think you'd li I'd like to see her pull, pull that back. She's a little bit out of control. Great block. But she, she gets the floater to go. Now 15 on the day. Well, she's just working like she's going to get her point. There, there she goes. And there's the first three made this half by the Houston Cougars. Turnover. And nearly another steal from Kiara Perry. And after making the three, Harris draws a foul in the corner. Sixteen points now for Jasmine Harris. She's three of six from three, six of eleven overall. Is that a fourth three? No, it's off the rim. Good execution. They got the shot they wanted. It just didn't go down. Adams took some contact after her left her hand. Froling wants her teammates to slow things down. Under three minutes left here at Hoffines. 
Perry in there battling that time. She's the one that kept it alive. I mean, Froling is up to 20. That's just an amazing little step through. Four shy of her season high set against Boston College in November. Good feet and a good finish. Jacqueline Blake. Well, that's what they've needed is Blake to, to you know, the big girls to put some offense on the board. That's the first time I've seen her really face up and have confidence and just take it down. She's up to double digits with 10 on the day. 18 point lead for SMU. We are American. We are the spark that ignites. Dazzling, brilliant, intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. Welcome back to Ha Finds. A, another look at our American Digital Network forthcoming broadcasts. Tuesday, Wednesday, Cincinnati's at Central Florida, then Houston will be at Memphis. And next Saturday, Tulane's at Cincinnati. And then at the end of the month, you'll be in Dallas as Memphis visits. Yeah, Memphis and SMU, that's another good matchup there. But, you know, it's early in the season. We still have 11 conference games left. Everybody's trying to put their pieces together. This was an exciting game. This is everything. It was I don't I don't care where you are in the league. At any point, you can gain confidence in, and and this is one that both of these teams, you know, need to get their identity on. Full court press from Houston. Now this has been highly effective for them. They've gotten probably of the four or five times they've done it, they've had two or three turnovers. And a blocking foul. And it goes against Ashlyn, or Angela Harris, excuse me. And that is her fifth on the day. So Harris departs, tough shooting day, two of 12. Was yep. two of nine from three, had six points. I think that happens when you make her the player to watch. She, she was the player to watch today. And, you know, sometimes when you make Sports Illustrated, you know, it's the same thing. And, and uh, we had her as our player to watch. She is a great player. Tough night for her. Uh, sometimes that just happens. Cami Mickens, senior guard, makes the first free throw. Freshman year at Boston College. Sophomore year at Trinity Valley Junior College. I think Mickens and Perry and Bradshaw... Those guys coming off the bench gave them eight or nine deep today, and, and that's that's really good to see. Collins looks as healthy as I've seen her at the post. She's done some great things for her team and played outstanding defense. Adams drew the foul, but it was Perry once again, I think, deflecting that initial pass that led to the steal and the fast break opportunity for SMU. Butler reached in on the foul. Adams to the line. She has 15 points on the day. It's now three of three from the free throw line. Mackenzie Adams playing her 50th career game at SMU today. It's her 80th career collegiate game. Played one season at Arkansas. But she's back home in Dallas. She's a Frisco native. Named Newcomer of the Year last year in the American Athletic Conference. That's a pretty big honor. Makes both. Checking in for SMU. Armani Degar, another Dallas area player from Grand Prairie, Texas. Out of Mansfield Timberview High School. Jasmine Harris off the mark from three. But a foul stain underneath, as that was drawn by Jacqueline Blake. Okay. 
Reese is in the game, and we haven't seen her all night. I think uh, they got away with one right there on her, but I like the fact that they're fighting in there. Michaela Reese, junior out of Colorado Springs. Well, I think this is a tough time for Houston now. He's got to go back, um, you know, and talk to his team about, you know, how they get better. And um, I think their inability to get to the free throw line was a big key. Uh, they didn't really attack as much as they could. Their defense didn't really create as many turnovers in the quarter court. I thought they rebounded well in the first half, but when you don't shoot the ball, they were one and done. Blake up to 11 points on the day after the free throw, and Reese will go to the line after a reach in by Jasmine Harris. Yeah, it's interesting. You talked about the depth of SMU. The bench for Houston outscored SMU 26-8, but you're saying all the intangibles, defense, work rate, all the things that maybe don't show up in the box score was a big thing for SMU today? Yeah, I also think that, you know, one of their key players didn't start. So, you know, she's a big part of their offense. Harris coming off the bench. Um, so, you know, doesn't always mean that the best players are starting for him. I think he goes a lot by how you prepare and practice uh, who he's going to start versus maybe who his best kids are. I think he was hoping that, you know, Kaufman would be able to do a little bit more than she has. Talking to her in the pregame, she just, you know, she said she really doesn't like to score. And, I, you know, I think if you're a player, you you got to want to score. I mean, I always like scoring. I, I didn't like it when I didn't score. So um, I, think, I think he wanted more out of her tonight. Under 30 seconds left. Shot clock down to six. Reese off the front end. Now the shot clock is off. SMU can hold if they choose. The Cougars will go to UConn next Saturday. While SMU has a Wednesday home game coming up. That is against USF, a top 25 program. A big win for the Mustangs. A huge third quarter was the difference. And it leads to a 21-point victory at Houston. Final score, SMU 66, Houston 45. More coming up. We are American. We are the spark that ignites. Dazzling, brilliant, intense. We are plugged in with the volume turned up all the way. Because on this court, on any given night, the energy of five becomes the power of one. That's power. We are power. At SMU, students and faculty work hand in hand to shape answers to real world challenges. Yes, yeah, so there's no such thing as a lesser person. How can we strengthen human rights around the world? It turns out computer malware is extremely. How do we prevent cyber terrorism? The, the limb comes off. How the can the human body set new records of performance? What can presidents teach us about leadership? From the SMU campus in Dallas, we're shaping the answers that will shape the future of the world. To discover your power, you have to innovate, inspire, be up for the challenge, have the drive to achieve, and the vision to transform. To unleash your power, boldly forge ahead to a place where nothing holds you back. This is the University of Houston. Welcome to the Powerhouse. It's over here in Houston, SMU, a big win against the Houston Cougars. Let's go down to Angela Beck. She is with SMU head coach Travis Mays and double-digit scorer Alicia Froling. Coach, the tale of two halves. 
a, a, a remarkable second half. Talk about it. Well, I think we slowed down. It looked as if we know what we were looking for, and we were determined to execute. Uh, we didn't have the careless turnovers. We didn't have the rush shots. And I think we eventually wore Houston down. The message I saw was get the ball inside to Collins and inside to Frawling, and you did it back to back to back, and then they had to call timeout. Well, we thought we had that opportunity in the first half. Like I say, we were rushing. But I went in there and gave them a few choice words at halftime, and, and, and they bounced back. We got the ball inside early, and I think that freed up the outside shooting and also some uh, fast break points for us. You only gave up one three in the second half. What did you do to adjust to that? Well, we told them. I felt that was one of Houston's strengths. I felt that we let them get transition baskets and threes. They were going to hang around. But if we took that away, I felt our, our half-court defense was good enough to hold them. And it held true, so hopefully I can build a little bit of trust with that group in the locker room. Great job, Coach. Thank you so much. I'm here with the player of the game, Alicia Falling. Proling, excuse me, Alicia. I say your, say your name so much. Well, obviously another double-double for you, an outstanding effort. Talk about it. Um, I think the first half we started shaky, but we came out as a team, you know, we're trying to turn it around this season. And um, credit to my teammates, like they did awesome. I think defensively was what won us the game in the second half. Talk about some of your de your, your teammates like Perry and, uh -huh. and Collins and some of the guys that contributed. Yeah, I mean, KP was awesome, Kat's Kier, um, KP, um, Kier Perry. Uh, her steals in the second half, you know, she really picked it up. She got a heap of deflections. And then Steph, she's getting her confidence. She's getting her strength. Like, she's starting to finish around the basket. And it takes pressure off me. Like, I mean, people can't double-team me because they've got two, those two on the other side. Talk about your tempo in the second half. How did you guys calm down? Uh -huh. um, we know what game we can play, and I think we've been frustrated at ourselves the last few games that we have played. So we came out, we knew what we had to do. We knew, to, we, knew we had to stop them on the three-point line. So that's what we did. Good job. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So a very entertaining game here in Houston this afternoon. One point lead for SMU leads to a 21 point victory on the afternoon. The road team has won three straight encounters between these two and Houston will try to get a chance at some revenge in Dallas in February. For Angela Beck, this is Matt Peterson signing off. Today, SMU gets their second conference win of the season.